Are you recording, by the way? Hmm? Okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع قداهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد well, this is one of the classes of the academy and it is going to be about the methodology of Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah consisting of four parts. And the book that I've chosen or the booklets of Tasfiyah wa tarbiyah You could uh, download the Tasfiyah wa tarbiyah from the internet. Arabic version and English version. Somebody's on Arab here. Do you know somebody Arab here? I've got an Arabic copy, extra one. For the Arabic person. As for the English, as I said, you could download it. Tasfiyah wa Tarbi. Today is the 19th of Dhul Hijjah, 1444. And it is the 7th of July, 2023. Tasfiyah wa Tarbiyah, which is translation of the book itself, is Tasfiyah. That is filtration, tasfi, you soften, you filterize, and terbiya, cultivation. So these are the two concepts that the Sheikh al-Albani, the mujaddid of this era, the one who revived the deen, came with these two concepts in order for this ummah to stand on their feet. Now, it is not an innovated two concepts. These two concepts have been taken from the Quran and they've been taken from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And for the Ummah to stand on its feet and to revive the triumph that it had during the time of the generation of the Sahaba, the companions and the followers, they can no way to it except by following tasfiya wa tarbi to filterize the deen from whatever had lingered to it from the corruption whether it's in the aqidah whether it is in the quran tafsir whether it is in the ahadith which is not authentic whether it is in the fiqh to filterize the deen from all these things which lingers to it and it is not to be approved by Allah or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the second one is to cultivate, cultivation. Cultivation means that after you filterize the religion and you bring it back as it was at the time of the companions, then you start bring up the people and raise them onto this Deen, and that's how we go back to the same steps that those who are the predecessors they were following, and that's how we're going to achieve the triumph. Otherwise, we will be in the tail of all the other nations. Sheikh Al Albani, rahimahullah, had made or delivered a lecture. This lecture was delivered in one of the Islamic Institute in Amman the capital of Jordan and that was in the year 1393 Hijri which is 1973 we're talking about 50 years ago and the title of that lecture and the sheikh had lived all his life to serve the purpose of those two concepts, namely the first one, Tasfi. So he had lived all his life. He lived more than 80 years in order to filterize 
the Islamic Aqeedah from all these corruption that crept into it and also the Sunnah from all these Ahadith which also crept into it so he would distinguish the Hadith Sahih from the Hadith Al-Da'if one authentic from the non-authentic and also filterizing the fiqh from all these uh, bad and corrupted opinions which also crept into the fiqh. So this lecture, then it was written. You know, some of these lectures, the scholars, they say, Wallahi, they deserve to be written. But some of the people who write lectures, they just, you listen from one ear and straight away go from the other ear outside, no benefit. Or it goes straight away to the dustbin. It's only just to mesmerize people and make them pumped up emotionally that there is no benefit in them. And some of those lectures from the scholars, mashallah, they last for people and generation afterward and after them live to benefit from those lectures. So I have chosen this booklet and inshallah it will be beneficial to us. And I would ask our brother, what's his name? Mustaq. 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 Mustaq to read from the English translation. And I will tell him to stop what I want him to, what I want to elaborate. So I've got four lectures. And uh, in Arabic, the book is a consisting of 34 pages in Arabic. There's four lectures. I'm aiming to finish at least 10 pages each lecture. And in English, it is about last page, more than 26 pages because there's a lot more than about 30 pages as well. Let's just see, inshallah, what we can do today. So start with the translation from the book itself. Yeah. A brief rather to the author, we don't want that. That's it. Pub, read for me. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. Asbat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When the tasfiyah al tarbiya all praises are due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek, we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls, from the evil of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is no one to misguide Him, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, there is no one to guide Him. I bear witness that there's none has the right to be worshipped except except Allah alone, without any partner, and Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. <laughs> All you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except in the state of Islam. O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single person. From it he created his wife, and from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. Do not cut ties with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is ever an all-watcher over you. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. O you who believe, fear Allah and speak the truth. He will direct you to do righteous deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then indeed he has achieved a great achievement. Indeed, the best speech is the best. Indeed, the best of speech is the speech of Allah and the speech of the guidance. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst of affairs are the novelties and every novelty is an innovation. Every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire. Right. Sheikh al-Albani, 50 years ago, starting with this khutbah, introduction, which we call it khutbah al-hajjah. Khutbah al-hajjah, dressing of need. Sheikh wanted to revive this because it was actually forgotten at his time. Lots of people would use their own words, 
which is make them as a rhyme. But they're not from the words of the Prophet. The Prophet of Allah, whenever he makes a wedding or he makes a speech, khutbah al Jumu'ah, he would start with this khutbah, addressing of need. You need something. So you need for this marriage to be fulfilled. You need for the people to adhere to the talk. You need the people who come to the Jumu'ah to benefit from the speech. So you address the people with this, hoping that Allah will open their hearts. So this is like the key to open the hearts of the people would listen to what is coming after that. It's called Qutbat al-Hajj. Sheikh al-Albani is the one definitely had revived this. He made a small booklet, treatise, pamphlet you want to call it, okay, about Qutbat al-Hajj. About Qutbat al-Hajj. And he said Qutbat al-Hajj and its importance and Hajj to Nasi ilayh, and also the need of the people to it. So much so that the Shays Albani, revival of this Sunnah, that people now hardly start their talk except with what? Except with this. Alhamdulillah. The talk, tired, tired, tired. And I bet I would like. I got extra copies. I need to have a, inshallah, reward from that. <laughs> but, so, Khwani, Khutbat al Haja is words chosen by the Prophet. There's no need for us to add to it or subtract it. Example It says, In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, Wana Stahinu, Wana Stahfir. We find some orators, people who speak. They add, when I stand in, why do you add this word? Are you satisfied with what the Prophet said to us? Stick, don't add, when I stand in. Some people add, some people subtract. Don't just use that because you don't know what the baraka lies into this format, this khutbah that the Prophet has given us. And when the Prophet of Allah told us something regarding the ibadah, we have to stick to it. So he told us, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Max. So somebody's going to say, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa atu wa matu wa tatu wa tatu wa tatu. He's adding words to it. You would say to him, Come on, brother. Wa barakatuh. Say it in here. Come on, brother. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. Full stop. No one is standing. Come on. Say it in. You don't know where the barakah lies. Don't add words. Don't change words. Stick to the Prophet of Allah. There's no harm for the person to start with other than that. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. But if you want to take a sunnah all the time, it's this one. There's no harm if somebody at mashallah always told the people to say this and then somehow he started his khutbah till uh, the introduction with another khutbah which is like Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Right. Now we come to the second which is to proceed so today as you all know and as all of you know are in a time in which the muslims have reached a certain point a point which cannot get worse for the muslim who believes in allah in the last day in terms of humiliation and subjugation to others thus due to the sensitivity of everyone amongst us about this prevailing humiliation which is unfortunately upon all of the islamic lands and all the different classes of the people we are always and forever. That's it. We're always and forever going to question. Yes? Stop it. Second paragraph. Basically, Sheikh Al Albani talks about his time, 1970s. I wish that, that if he was lived to see now, then he would be a different scenario with what is going crazy these days. Uh, he's talking about 1970s. Muslims basically have reached such a state. And this Ibarra, this text, you could see it all the time being repeated in the tongue of the scholars. So when there is lots of pitan and lots of tribulation, you find the scholars mention this. For example, Lisan al-Din ibn al-Khatib in his book, Al-Ihata fi Akhbar Ghir Nata. To tell you about what happened to the people of Andalusia, you know, in Spain, when they were uh, having Spain under the rule of Islam. 
So he says, what happened in Garnapa? Why we lost? Why we lost that land? So he was talking about what happened in those days that made the Muslims weak. And one of those things, believe it or not, too many masajids. Huh? Yes. Too many masajids in one locality. Number of masjid in one place. In one neighborhood. You think that this is a sign of good? No, it is not. This is a sign of disunity. Why do we need too many masjids here? So the masjid of tribe, so and so. The masjid of sect, so and so. The masjid of race, so and so. This is Bengali. This is Bangladeshi. This is this is uh, Pakistani. This is Indian. This is Arab, no Arab. I'm not talking about Masjid Sufi where the people dance and Rafida Temple where the people uh, tap their chest and beat them up. I'm talking about the Sunnah. Without the Sunnah. In one unity, in one neighborhood, you'll find one. More. And that is what, one of the things that made this Muslims a weak. Al Maqrizi in his book, As Suluk Li Ma'rifati Duwal Al Muluk, he had mentioned that statement of Sheikh Al Albani so many times. That's why Sheikh Al Albani is using it. Which is the Zaman in Wasalafihi al Muslimuna ila haddin la yunkinu an yasila ila aswa amin hu Muslimun yukminu billahi wa rasul. The Muslim had reached a level that cannot be worse. But the one after that is going to be worse. But up to that time, it's the worst. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Ma min amin, there's not a single year if it will pass except the following one will be what? Until you meet your Lord. Anas radiallahu anhu, he said these words. He said, I've heard this from the Prophet of Allah when those people wanted to erupt and revolt, make a revolution, a revolt against an ajjaj. Okay, so he came to Anas to back them up. He said to them, No, it's little, be patient. Asmiru, or verily, this Hajjaj had killed more than 120,000, some of them companions. 120,000. Yet the Anas, he said, be patient, because every year it passes and the following one will be worse. Ibn al Athir, in his book Al Kamil Fit Tariq, mentioned this paragraph again. So Sheikh Al Albani is following their steps. We have reached to a stage where there is can't be worse. Sheikh al is talking about the 1970s. There was Fitan at that time, people away from their redeem, and Palestine has been taken away from the Muslims. Um, so many people, uh, so many states from the Gulf, they were under the colonization of the West. Most of the, in the 1970s, Qatar did not really gain the independence at that, that time. Um, Fitan, so many of have Sheikh, if to live here, subhanahu up to now, there will be even, he would say, he would change his mind about the 70s. Muslim has reached even worse. Right, let's go now to paragraph number three. This is the, this is the disease of this. Yeah. Well, it's nothing to do with this. It's to do with the system. You see? We are always and forever asking one another in our societies, the general and the specific, and in our assemblies about the reason which has led the Muslims to this evil, despicable state. We ask what has, lead, we ask what has led the Muslims to this insulting and shameful condition, and what is the real reason for them reaching this rock bottom degradation from the humiliation upon them. Likewise, we also ask one another as to what is the cure and remedy, so that we are capable of being saved from this humiliation and sadness. Opinions are diversifying and observations are multiplying, and everyone is coming with a methodology, a path which is, in his opinion, is the solution to this problem and the cure for this dilemma. So, knowing the disease is half of the remedy, is that true, doctor? Huh? 
knowing the disease. So if you have managed to get the, what is the disease, then it's very easy for you to go on prescribe a medicine. Otherwise, try this, try that, try this, try that. You have to know the disease. We call it in Arabic, Ma'rifat al Nusf dawa To know what is the disease is half of the remedy. So we have to basically investigate what is the disease. Now, when we look at these manahij, these partisans, these sects, okay, what, regardless of what the names are, you'll find in these days that they are actually, they were established in order to fix the current situation, true? Whatever it is, Ikhwanis, Tahriris, they, they are so-called, they went out these manahij methodology in order to fix the situation. But because these partisans, we see them, did not understand what is the true disease. So that is why they have came up with methods of remedies which made the disease even worse. Because they didn't know the disease. They didn't put their hands on the disease. So because of that, they came up with solutions which made the disease worse. They did not go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And this uh, reminds us of what happened at the time of the companions. When there is a problem, where do they go? Do they go to the, to the front? Do they don't read the newspaper? Do they go to the witchcraft? And, no. For example, Hanbal. Hanbal al Asli. Radi Allah. He went out of his house saying, Nafaka Hamdala, Nafaka Hamdala. Hamdala is a hypocrite, Hamdala is a hypocrite. Abu Bakr says, What's wrong, Hamdala? He said, When we are with the Prophet, وسلم, he's reminding us about hellfire, paradise. No, Allah, we are so pumped in Imam. As soon as we leave the Prophet, we go to the house, play with the kids, play with the wife, cuddle the wife, and then we are away from the Imam. This is hypocrisy. Abu Bakr said, Well, then I am a hypocrite as well. But we are a hypocrite. They went to the Prophet وسلم, to gain the remedy. So they're telling the Messenger of Allah, is this hypocrisy? What is happening? He said, very. If you to come out when you left me, as you are with me, you will become angels. The angel will come, shake your hands. You will become like angels. So the angel will come and shake your hands. But because you're not angel, you're human being. Sa'a wa sa'a. Oh, Hamdala, a person one hour, one hour. That means sometimes ibadah and sometimes in the dunya, but it is ibad, but it's not, doesn't mean sometimes I obey Allah and sometimes I disobey Allah. Sometimes I read Quran and sometimes I get naked and dance. No, it doesn't mean like that. It doesn't mean like this. It's one hour, I worship Allah, ibadah, the of Allah, and another one, I'm, you know, am I trying to get, you know, bring my children to the picnic and all of that? But this is part of the ibadah. Looking for the nice restaurant to get myself fed, you know, a nice kebab and all of that. In order to get myself stronger to read Quran and Prophet. So it's not really uh, when somebody talks to you, brother, don't talk to me. I'm oh, Quran, Quran. It's not really. it's communication as well. Sorry. Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu. He said, people from the companions came to the Prophet and said, Messenger of Allah. Inna najidu fi anfusina mara'imata'adamu. We find something goes inside ourselves. We find it is going to be too much for us to go and tell you about it. We dare to say it. For verily, one of the narration, If it's to, to, for me to drop from heavens to the earth, is better and better for me than to speak about it. So the Prophet وسلم, he told him, Oh, did you feel that? Yes, Messenger of Allah. This is a true Iman. I mean, only the Mu'min will get these things. Telling him, you know, who created you, who created Allah. If that comes to you and you are pushing it, you don't want to talk about it, then that's Iman. Mu'min. Because of the Kafir, Shaitan is letting him. He doesn't really bother with it. But the believer will start attacking him with this whispering. You try, I don't want to think about it. How can I talk about it? 
you will not even dare to say to the shaykh to ask about it. That's iman. That means you are a believer. And shaitan is trying to penetrate your belief with such whispering. It's only whispering, but if it came to, this, to, the, to the level of that you are in doubt with the existence of Allah, then we have to sit down with you. Something else. But you push it away. La ilaha illallah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. It'll go away. So, Sheikh al-Albani telling us as well what happened in that story, which I, a number of times I said it, how the people derived methodologies and methods of curing the disease, and they were not correct. A village, the inhabitants of it, depends upon a river that comes from the mountain. That's the source. This river is the source of power for these people. They drink from it, they cook from it, everything. Somehow, some people started throwing dirt, washing dirt, or maybe even throw, throwing dead animals, even their menses, into the water. So the water became what? Polluted. And the people started drinking from the polluted water. They became what? Weak. Because it became weak, it became vulnerable. So the enemies around that village, they got a chance now to invade and take the food in that village, whatever they've got, petrol, oil, everything, because they could find the village was weak. Why? So that's water. Now, when the villagers had heard about the attack is going to come to them, so they made now consultation. The chief was asking them, what should we do? A group said, it's better to go and import strong weapons. Then we could really what? Defend ourselves. Other they said, no, we should revolt against you leaders. You are the corrupt. We got good leaders, we will win. Other they said, no, we'll put hand to hand, we'll start saying, Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. And we'll get strength, and we'll defeat the enemies. But the ones who are prudent, sensible, old, knowledgeable, that no matter what you're going to do, as long as the source of water is polluted, you're not going to defeat your enemies. You're not going to defend your village. This source of water is the Quran and Sunnah. The dirt is the heresies and the innovation that went into it. And this remedy is to filterize that source to make sure that it has gone back to what? It's purity. So the people will drink from it and will get strong. Otherwise, it's still weak. I mean, it's a weak person. You give him a, a, you know, a weapon, still he's weak. He can't use it. He'll be scared as soon as he sees a bullet. He runs for his life. But if he's healthy, aqidah proper, mashallah, he will be willing to put his health and his wealth in the in the first place. So this is paragraph two or three, or to paragraph number four. What Anna? I see. And I believe that this problem is something which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, described, and made clear its cure, as as in some of his narrations, which are established from him. From these narrations is his his saying, ﷺ. When you deal in ina. And no, 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 no. Before he said the hadith again, I see he's going in too fast. Okay. And I believe, yes, and I believe, and I believe that this problem is something which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, described, and made clear its cure, as in some of his narrations. That's it. So, some of his narrations. Can you just read like the BBC one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So, here, so uh, he said, I believe that this problem. Which the Prophet had mentioned, and he had described in some of his hadith, and he had shown the remedy in that hadith. And then he can mention this hadith. So, this Shaykh al Albani, rahimahullah, he is the Alim al Rabbani. Alim kun Rabbani, bima kuntum tu'alimuna kitaba, bima kuntum tadrusuna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Rabbani. Alim, he knows what he's saying. So, he will look into the Quran and the Sunnah in order to investigate what is the disease and also to know what is the remedy so the remedy is in the prophet's sight let's go 
and discuss this hadith. And this is the hadith of Bay'ili. Let's just see what is the hadith that Shaykh al-Albani refers to. And I bet you when the hadith was said by the Shaykh al-Albani in 1973, very, very, very few people have heard about this hadith. Very few people have heard about this hadith. Now, Tadr. When you deal in Ina and you hold on to the tails of the cows, Ina, 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 and you hold on to the tails of cows, and you are content with agriculture, and you abandon jihad, Allah will inflict humiliation upon you and will not remove it until you return to your religion. Allahu Akbar. This is a great hadith. Actually, it's got the disease and it's got the remedy, as we're going to see in detail when we discuss this hadith. Right. Number six. Go on. So we find that in this hadith, despite its, it's despite its what, despite its cons, uh, cons, conciseness, 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 conciseness. conciseness. That means short. Despite, despite it. Allah, after this, this is the program I'm going to. Despite we find this hadith, despite its conciseness, very few words, two lines, because the Prophet was he said, "Uti tu jawami al kaf." In the hadith, he said, أُعطيتو, أُعطيتو ستن, أُعطيتو سبعن, Other prophets of Allah have been given seven things. Another ratio six things. Another ratio five. That other prophets were not being given. Other prophets were not being given those. One of them, words which are fewer in number, yet they have a lot, a lot of meanings. They need a book. Two words. Khutab. Narrators, orators, khutbah al-Jum'ah, just for those two words. Ad-Din and nasiha Book about Ad-Din and nasiha Two words. The hadith of the Shaykh and the, the Prophet Wasallam, which are long hadith, they are not even reaching 40. 40 is maximum. 40, 40 hadith. Long hadith. Not more than the 40. Around the 30 number. 35, 36, which is authentic. The rest of the hadith are very concise, short. Okay? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فُضِّلْتُ عَلَى الْأَنْبِيَا Being given preference upon, over the Prophet's by, وَتِيْتُ جَوَامِ عَلْكَ I've been given these collective words. And one of these, this hadith is one of those from Jawami al-Karim as we're going to see. So, from the hadith, which is long hadith, hadith al-ifq, the forged lie against Aisha. That's a long hadith. Long story. It's one of these hadith which, is, as I said, doesn't really exceed the 40 hadith. Number one, paragraph seven. Paragraph seven, according to what I divided in myself. Father. So we find that in this hadith, despite its conciseness, there is a mention. That's six and then uh, seven. There's the mentioning. The first type of this disease. Is no, that no, no, no. Continue, continue. I didn't stop it. Ah. After here, after conciseness, that's number six. Now we start after that. There is a mention of the disease which had spread out until it surrounded the Muslims. Thus, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned two types of the disease as an example and not just to restrict it to these two only. That's according to me, that's number seven. So he had, basically, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the disease, mentioned the remedy, and I sacrificed my father and my mother for his sake. Prophet of Allah, it looks like he lives amongst us. He's living amongst us, and he knows what is the disease, because he speaks from divine. So he says that I am the doctor. I am the one who is going to be saying to you what is the disease. It's not Facebook. It's not YouTube. It's not the social media. No. Okay. Number eight, which is the first type. The first type of this disease is that Muslims have fallen into some of the forbidden actions deceptively with the knowledge that they are forbidden. And this is the underlying factor in his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, when you deal in Ina. Ina. That's Ina. Stop. stop. But the Ina one. This Ina. People are falling into some of the things which are haram by what? Hila. Deception. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, do not embark upon what the Jews embarked upon so that you will make the haram 
things that Allah made haram upon you to be halal were the cheapest of ways. Cheap and subhibit. The Jews have done that. They try to manipulate the laws of Allah and we Muslims copy them as well. And there is a number of examples for this. One example is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed punishment upon the Jews who had killed the prophets in some stage and era. Upon those Jews who devoured the wealth of the orphan. Upon those who had changed the laws of Allah. The ones who consumed riba interest. Those are the ones whom Allah punished them either by transforming them into uh, the animals of pigs and monkeys or some of them they have been tested by Allah prohibiting things upon them which were halal. For example, Allah says, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ هَادُوا أَرَّمْنَا كُلَّ ذِبُّهُمْ Upon the Jews, we have made prohibited upon them to eat each animal that got divided hoof. وَمِنَ الْبَقَرِ وَالْغَنَمِ حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ شُحُومَهُمْ And also from the cows and from the sheep, we made haram upon them a shuhum, which is the fat. So imagine when they slaughter the animal, the fat is mixed with the meat. They can't eat that meat until they make sure that the fat is taken away from the meat. And that is an agonizing job. Oh, it's a torture. They can't eat that meat except if it is free from fat. 100%. So imagine now how much fat they would be taken away. We'll build containers, houses, warehouses. Lots of fat. So when the Jews saw this, they can't take it. So much fat. And this fat is beneficial. But they can't use it. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that when Allah prohibits something to be eaten, then he prohibits any profit that comes out of it. So if you can't sell that thing, you cannot benefit by selling that thing. The Jews, what they did, they gathered the fat and they put it into big containers. Put the fire underneath, they melt it into oil. So by this they thought it's not fat anymore. It is oil. That's the first trick. Second trick, they did not eat the oil or use the oil. No, 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 no. no. They sold the oil. So they sold the oil and they priced they, they, the profit that came out and used that. This is Manipulation of the rules of Allah by the cheapest of ways and deception. So the Prophet of Allah, he said, La'an Allah Allah had cursed the Jews. Allah fought the Jews. And may Allah fight the Jews. How? Lama, when Allah prohibited upon them the fat, they melted it. Then they sold it. Then akalu bithamani, they consume the profit out of it. When Allah haida harama akla shayin, harama thamana. If Allah prohibits the eating of something, then he will prohibit the profit that comes out of it. And the Muslims are doing the same thing. Yes. The following the steps of the Jews. Unfortunately. And the Prophet of Allah, he said, don't follow. But some people are following. This is one of these called Al-Ina. You will see how the Muslims made the Haram Halal by deception, by manipulating the rules of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he had punished the Jews by making it is Haram upon them to fish. The fish and the whales on a sept. So they can fish on Saturday. Al Ahad, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Ahad, Nain, Salat, but not Sabbath. So Sabbath, they can't touch it. 24 hours from the sunset of the Jumu'ah 
until the sunset of what? Set. They can't come. That's why until now, in Palestine, the Jews, what do they do? They close every shops on Saturday. Because they, Allah had rested, uh, relaxed, when he had made the heavens and earth, according to them. And he relaxed what? On the seventh day, Saturday. So you have to relax as well. And the animals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them to adapt. Having God like us, intellect. There's no such thing, they, they, you know. You know they, they, they're smart in the way that they adapt. The mice, you know, the mice, if you put one trap to one mice, the other mice will not come to that same trap. That's it. They learned the lesson. One of them had died, sacrificial, but the other ones will not approach. They learn. They learn from each other. They adapt. That's why you have to what? Even, you know, even the, the, the germs, viruses, the germs. That's why here in this country, they don't really prescribe you the, uh, the strongest of all anti antibiotics. Why? Because these germs adapt. SubhanAllah, adapt. And they build their immune system against them. So they will give you one extra and then give you one extra. That's why antibiotics here is for prescriptions. In our countries, you could purchase poison if you wish from chemistry. Allah musta. True or not, Sheikh? <laughs> Can I get some sleeping pills? I want to put somebody to sleep. Give it to me. Allah <laughs> musta. Yeah, there's no control. No control over medicine. So this fish had found that, that there is no attack on that 24 hours, which is the set, where there is an attack in the rest of the week. So what they did, in the rest of the week, they don't come to the beaches. So there is no hunt, no fishing. And they fish very few fish. But on a set, they come with large numbers. Not only that, they show themselves on top of the sea and with their pail as well. I'm here. You can't touch me. SubhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in Surah Zarah. وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةً اللَّهِ Ask them, ask the Jews about the village which was next to the sea and that is Elat. Opposite to Aqaba. In Jordan. وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةً اللَّهِ إِذْ يَعْدُونَ بِالسَّبْ When they used to transgress, make haram on the sab. How? When it is Saturday, Saturday, which should come with large numbers, showing themselves. Shura, shura, shura means like you know the sailing ship. Shura, this is so in the pale. Oh, I'm here on Saturday, but when it's not Saturday, disappear in the middle of the sea. The Jews couldn't take it, so now they want to make the haram halal by the cheapest of all ways. What they did, they put their nets before Friday sunset, before the Jummah. Not doing haram. They put the nets there. Then they leave the nets there. So the fish they come on Saturday. As I said, they're not really as clever to know, oh, there is nets there. You know. You can see. It. They come inside, they don't touch them. Saturday, they don't even touch them. When Saturday sunset comes, they the, the, the fish, by its nature, they want to go back now to the middle of the sea. They're trapped. With what? With the net. Because they pull it. They will wait until the following day, Sunday. And they will fish it all of it. And by this they think, what? They are doing hell. But actually, they are making worse haram. If one of them is to fish on Saturday, he knows it's haram. This is less haram than this one who is making it halal by this one. You understand? If they have some of them have to sin against Allah, well, I wouldn't fish. I sin against Allah and I embarked upon this sin by fishing on Saturday, knowing it's haram. But now they think it is what? This is the difference between a sin and what? A bid'ah. Okay, a sin and a bid'ah. If you come to a Sufi man who's shaking his head from one side to another, Allah, Allah, we didn't fear Allah. What are you talking about? I'm saying Allah, Allah. True or not? I didn't even fear Allah. Because saying, I'm saying Allah, Allah. Why do you come to me, Akhi? Go to those people. Who drunken, who steal, steal the ones who are naked. Allah, Allah. He will not listen to you because he thinks he's doing what? They think that they're doing good, but they're not. But 
something. Yes, number nine. So you can talk about the Ina. What is the Ina? Ina, as is. Uh, we'll, we'll stop here. I think we're ready. So we'll stop a break, inshallah. We'll stop there. All right. Ay Allah. Biscuits are there. And I've got biscuits here.
بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله على آله وصحبه ومن والاه. We're going to start now to talk about the first disease, first type. That is the type where you manipulate the rules of Allah with the cheapest of ways. And here is the Eena. Prophet Salmi said, إذا تبايعت بالعينة. What is the Eena? Tell Bismillah. Eena, as it is known from the books of fiqh, is a type of transaction whose prohibition is indicated by this hadith. Despite this, some of the scholars, not to mention other than them, have held that this transaction is permissible. An illustration of Eena if, is, is if a man buys any commodity from a trader, e.g. a car, he buys a car for a price which is paid back in installments over a fixed period of time. Then he sells the car back to the one who sold it to him, but for a price less than that for which he bought it for originally. However, this time it is in exchange for cash and the original seller, now the buyer, pays a cash payment less than the installments and the debt by which the car was bought. So, in order for this car to be sold, for example, for 10,000 lira, from credit, the buyer would then carry out the transaction for 8,000 lira with the original seller, therefore registering a surplus of 2,000, which he has to fulfill. I don't think you understood that. You need explanation for it. Right. Because, as I said, it's, it's, it's translation of the Arabic as well. It plays a big role for you not to understand. He said at the beginning, Bayu al is haram according to what the Prophet said. Yet we find, unfortunately, some of the scholars make it halal. Ah, Prophet said, If you do that, then Allah will destroy you, put humiliation upon you. If it's halal, how can Allah will put humiliation upon us? Uh, if it's a halal transaction. What is al ina al ina from i'ana, from the word that to help. This person, who is not after an item, he's an after money. So if he goes, let's say I am Mustafa, he is the trader, and I am the person who's in need of money. I want money. I knocked on the door of lots of people. Farah said, give me money. No way. Mr. Nabil, give me money. No way. No way give me money. But I need money. So because of that, we have to do something about it. So I came to Mustaq. Mustaq, please lend me 1,000. I'll give it to you in one year, inshallah. Mustaq says, uh, well, you return it for me 1,100. After one year, I said to him, Mustaq, there you, putting the top in top of your head. And with this beard, this store, you're asking me for extra 100? That's haram. Riba. No one said that. How dare you? Ah, okay, okay. Let's make it halal. The 100. How? So he would say to me, all right, by the way, I sell mobiles. Okay. I'm not interested in the mobile. I'm interested in the $1,000. I'm interested. Are you interested in to buy a mobile? I sell mobile. He says to me, said, okay, how much is this mobile? He says to me, this mobile is 1,000 pounds. He says to me, 1,000 pounds cash. But if you want to pay it in one year, it's 1,100. Okay, my dear Mustaq, I will buy it in installment. Okay, so you write my name. Mr. Abu Haj, Abu Suhaib is going to put for me this mobile for 1,100 in what? One year. First installment in the next month. This mobile is mine now. I haven't paid anything, but he registered it for me. First installment, but no, huh? 1,100. By the way, this transaction, some of the scholars even make it halal because to put the price up for the, for the time. And that's still haram, by the way. But some of the scholars, they make it halal. But this is two different things now. Now, the mobile still, I took it. All right, the stack, do you want to buy this mobile from me? No. Okay, yes, he buys it from me. All right. So look. All right, how much do you want to sell it, Abu Suhaib? Abu Suhaib, how much do you want it for me? Now he's going to say to me a price for this brand new mobile, not an old one, a box. When he's going to get it from me 
cheaper than he gets it from whom? The factory, from the dealer. So he would say to me, okay, I'll buy it from you, Abu Sohail, 800 pounds. Okay, brother, give me 800 pounds. So now he is the seller, I became what? The buyer. I was the buyer, I became what? The seller, that's what it is. So, he gives me now 800 pounds. When I sit in, Jazakallah khairan, he got the mobile here, and he registered on me, what? 1,100 pounds. If that was the riba clear, it would be much cheaper for me. I've asked him for 1,000, he told me to give me 1,100, and now I've got only 800 pounds. Mm -hmm. And still what? I have to pay 1,100, 300 pounds extra. I would have gone to the, you know, Harami Bank, Haram Bank, but then the new one was done. You know what happened now? Now this mobile is not just Haram for us, it's actually collapsed, destroyed the economy. Because the number of people that do this, it's not just me, lots. So imagine now that this person had taken this mobile cheaper than the factory. So the factory is going to close down. We call it, this is the burnt price. Now you could sell this for 900, which is the same wholesale for any shop to buy it from the factory. And he's selling it 900 pounds because he's making it still what? He's making it 100 because he bought it from me how much? 800, and I'm going to pay him 1,800 in one year. I might not pay him. He might put me in prison. Because he will take from me any checks. He will take from me a guarantor, one guarantor, two, and all of that. And that's called Bayhul Hid. Understood enough? Second way of doing it is called Tawarrub. But still, my intention to get the money. I didn't sell it to him. I took that brand of mobile. Sorry. Okay. I took the mobile from him. And I go to the following shop, not to him. Brother, how much do you want to sell it in a box? How much do you want to sell it? He knows that guy, how much it is cost uh, in the retailers, how much it costs in the factory. Okay, how much do you want to buy it? He knows I'm in need of money. Okay, whatever. All right, I'll give you 800 for it. Okay, 800, and I'll give it to him. I took the 800, and I need to pay this guy how much? 1,100, remember, for one year. I took the money. So this, this one, some scholars doing it halal because you're not selling it to what? The same person. But actually it's haram for me because I want money regardless of the situation. This is one type of reina. There's another type of reina, which the Sheikh did not discuss. This is a type of reina that they do in the Islamic banks. I know it and I've seen it with my own eyes. I used to have a bookshop. Next to me is cement seller. They sell cement. Or you could say for building houses, anything to do with nails, cement, you know, all of these uh, uh, building construction. So these people, they sell in thousands of pounds. So this guy, okay, he wants money. He comes and makes a deal. Let's say he's the cement dealer. Now, again, I'm sorry about that. This is a bad example. So he's a cement dealer. I'm the one who is supposedly, supposedly, not correct, let's go and build something, so I need cement. I don't need cement, I want money. So I said to him, you know, I want to buy and take money, so I want to uh, take from you, I will sell you some cement, I haven't got it, but I'm going to make a deal with the bank. The cement is as follows. I will go to the bank and I will say to them, I want 1,000 pounds worth of sacks of cement. Where do you want to buy it from? It's, I'm going to be buying it from him. Okay. The bank would say it's called Islamic Bank. We'll buy it from this guy for such and such money. And you pay us, you pay us 1,100. You understand me again? The bank will ask me for extra because he bought it from me. They, I will buy it. They will sell it for you for 1,100. But actually, they don't buy it yet. They will make sure that you have already said you're going to be paying to the bank. 1,100 of the year. And they take from you one guarantor, second guarantor. Make sure they're going to be buying 1,100 after what? One year. The representative of the bank, I haven't got the money yet. How, how do I get the money? The representative of the bank, he comes to this to sell. They will give him now 1,000 pounds. All right? And then this guy is going to load the cement in the truck so I could take it myself. 
you will see about one sack, three sacks, five sacks, ten sacks. Halat, goodbye. I've seen it. He leaves. Ah, uh, back. The sacks will go back to the shop. One sack, two sacks. Then he turned back. How much are you going to give me, please, for the cement? Uh, I'll give you 800. So I took 800. This guy, he had to receive 1,000 from the bank. And I have to pay 1,100 to the bank. Do you understand that now? This is happening day and day out. Did you understand what I did? He's not following me. Okay, explain it again. This bank is the one who's going to support, give me the money. So I say to them, let's say, give me 1,000 pound cash. Why the bank would give me cash? Well, they would back and say, what do you want with the cash? What do you want with, to buy you up? I want to buy it. I just want the cash. Okay, I want to buy worth of cement, 1,000 pounds. Okay, we will do that. You pay us 1,100. We will buy the cement for you for 1,000, but you have to pay us 1,100 because of the installments after one year. Okay. So they take from me all types of guarantee that I'm going to be making sure that if I go somewhere, they will put me in prison. I have to pay them 1,100. What do they do this? They come to the one who sells cement. Give this me, give him worth of cement of 1,000 pounds. Do you understand that? So the representative will come here and see now cement being loaded to the truck, which I'm going to take to my place, to my house, so-called house, and I build it. The 1,000 worth of sacks of cement, all right? So he's loading now, and he took the 1,000. After he loads about, I don't know, 50 sacks or 30 sacks, he leaves. We load it back again to the shop because I don't want the cement, I want the money. So I will sell the cement the person who had sold it to the bank. How much do you want for it? Now he's going to give me a price because I am under the thumb. I didn't say anything. So he will take the worth of 1,000 sounds. Uh, he will buy for me for even less than the factory, the manufacturer who manufactures the cement. He will say, okay, I'll give you 800. He will give me 800 pounds cash. That's I've got the money now. I've got the 800 pounds of cash. He got 1,000 pounds cash from the bank. But I need to pay the bank how much? 1,100. Do you understand the in and out? And people like me end up in prison later on because I can't pay it. Or the guarantor, he's going to be paying on my behalf. You know, the guarantor, the one who is in charge. That's another type of in And that is happening almost. I used to come to my bookshop every day. I'm just looking. Look at this guy. He's loading and unloading. Loading and unloading. That's what is happening. Allah Mustaf. And the guy who works for the bank, he left the bank. He became, mashallah, Muslim. And you know it's haram. He said, all the banks are manipulation. And this is called so-called Muslim banks. Muslim. Allah Mustaf. Right. We've understood now the Bayu al -Ina. And inshallah, we want to understand why is this haram? Tab. Listen to this. I'm not going to stop you until you read about a page and a half almost. Go ahead. This surplus is riba, usury interest. <coughs> Thus, it is obligatory upon the Muslim, the one who has heard the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which prohibit riba, that he does not make law for this type of ina transaction whilst there is a surplus there to be fulfilled. And this is because this surplus is clear riba. However, some of the people have deemed the permissibility of this because it comes under the category of buying and selling. They have drawn their conclusions from the generalities which show the permissibility of trade, such as the well-known ayah, Allah has permitted trade and forbidden riba. So they said, this is buying and selling, and there is no problem if there is an increase or decrease. However, the reality is that the buyer who bought for 10,000 on credit and then sold for 8,000 in cash, indeed his intent behind this was but to obtain the 8,000. And when he knew that this seller, a Muslim in his estimation, would not lend him the 8,000 in exchange for 8,000 given back later for the sake of Allah alone, then indeed he intended only to take a surplus from that. Thus, both of them have deceptively made this surplus lawful in the name of trade. So the, the, you know, me, like the beginning, if I came to him, give me brother 1,000, to me, 1,100 one year, I said, oh, dare you, how could you take 100? So 
So both of us, this is clear haram. So we have to go through this so that convince each other that what we're doing is halal. But same thing even worse. Nah. So the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was first of all, one who clarified for the people, as our Lord the Blessed the Most High has said, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ and we have revealed to you the reminder so that you may clearly explain to the people what has been sent down to them. What is the reminder here, the dhikr? Anybody want to tell me? We have revealed to you the dhikr. What is the dhikr here? No, it's not. This is the sunnah. We have revealed unto you the dhikr in order to clarify to the people what has been revealed to them. What has been revealed to them is what? Quran. We've sent you the sunnah in order to explain to the people what is being revealed to them from the sunnah. Subhanallah, the word dhikr here mentioned the Quran as the Quran. And in this one, dhikr, which is the sunnah. The other one is Quran, and this one is sunnah. So we have two revelations first revelation, second revelation. We sent to you the dhikr, sunnah, in order to explain to the people what is being sent down onto them, and that is the Quran. Both are from Allah. Prophet like said, just like Jibreel used to come down onto me for the Quran, he used to come down onto me as well for the what? Same thing. Quran and Sunnah. Now. Secondly, he was as described by our Lord the Blessed, the Most High. Bil the... With the believers, he is full of pity and mercy. From his, from his pity and mercy was that he notified us about the ambushes of shaitan's deception which are in store for humanity. And he, and he subhanahu wa ta'ala, warned us from the falling into the snares of shaitan, as is mentioned in many narrations. From these narrations is a subject matter at hand. So when he, as Rajal, said... Hmm? When he what? Uh, when he... Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Continue. Say it. Ba'yatun bil'ina. Go on. Um, when, Go on, read. when you deal in Aina, he meant when you make law for what Allah has made forbidden with the lowest type of deception and call it trade. However, the reality is that this calling it trade is actually an excuse and an incurrence of debts in exchange for surplus, and this is clear riba. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, warned us in this hadith from falling into the likes of this deception in making law for what Allah has made forbidden. And this is more dangerous than a Muslim falling into the forbidden things knowingly. Because when he does the... Listen to this very important. It's more haram than doing the uh, haram directly. Go on. Because when he does so, it is hope from him that one day he will return to his Lord and repent. And this is because he knows that what he is doing is forbidden. However, if the evil of his action was made pleasing to him due to a certain reason, be it a false interpretation or a far-reaching ignorance, then he will think that there is nothing wrong with this action, with his action. Naturally, it will not then occur to him that one day he will have to repent to Allah. Allah. The danger of the forbidden thing, which is made lawful in thought and in belief, is far more severe than the danger of the open forbidden thing. Thus, the one who consumes riba and knows it is riba and believes it is riba, despite the fact that he makes war upon Allah and his messenger, وسلم, as in the text of the ayah, his danger is consequently more insignificant than the one who consumes riba, believing that he is consuming something lawful. This is the like. This is the like. The, this is like the example of the one who drinks an intoxicant, believing that it is forbidden, with it being hoped from him that he will repent to Allah as As for the one who drinks the intoxicant, believing, due to the reason that it is a lawful drink then this is more dangerous than the former. And this is because he will never imagine making repentance from it as long as he misunderstands the ruling of this affair. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, mentioned the Ina transaction in this hadith, as we have mentioned from the onset, in order to set a specific example without restricting it to this alone. So he indicated that the consequences of every forbidden action committed what? Or you should... Hmm? Come up here. Hmm? This is the footnote. You don't need footnotes. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
the consequences are every forbidden action committed by a Muslim, which is made lawful for him due to some kind of interpretation, will be that Allah will humiliate him. And when this making lawful what Allah has forbidden spreads and circulates amongst the Muslims, Allah will humiliate them too because of it. Right. Because of it. Is that finished now? Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Then you mentioned the second part. Salah, we're going to stop here. So basically, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam is not just mentioning Bayi Al-Ina as Hata Bayi Al-Ina. He means here every haram that the Muslim makes it halal in a way of deception, whether wrong interpretation, ignorance, because of he likes it to be this way. Do you understand me? So every haram made halal by the Muslims in deception. So we're going to give you a number of examples. You understand, it's not just the The ina is like a, an example to show you why it is haram, why it is very big haram, why it is Allah will impose upon us humiliation because of it. Prophet of Allah indicated this because of number one, it is dangerous. Dangerous. When somebody makes it haram and he thinks he's doing halal. And he knows he's doing haram, but he's doing manipulation. Number two, it's coming now prevalent. Lots of Muslims are doing it, as I said to you. So let's just give an example to understand. Isn't it true? Some people now these days make so called nikah or shira. I have dealt with one of them. I have made a dismantling between couples. This person is mashallah became salad. He's still alive. And he was married to his wife. And his sister, she is married to a brother. Person. Now, brother of his blood, another person. But that was done on the foundation of Shirab. Their parents, the parents of this friend of mine, which I know. And the parent, the father of that person who was married to his sister, they got together and they said, you give me your daughter for my son and I will give you my daughter to your son. Do you understand that? They set a dowry exactly the same, but made this condition that would invalidate and make the marriage void. What happened? He came to me, this friend of mine, and he's saying to me, my father is commanding me to send my wife back to her father. And I've got no problem with my wife. It's just because the other person was married to my sister. He had a row with his wife. And he kicked her out of the house. So my father is now commanding me to kick my wife out. Do you understand that? Because the sister of this person is married to that person on this condition. So any problem that goes there reflects on this couple here. We have to dismantle between this marriage and make a remarriage just to make sure that we have to talk to the father. And I will remember that father of his. He's still alive. And I keep talking to him and talking. And because I came, he knows. Oh, I'm gonna do it. So before I even talk, yeah, I know it is haram. And, uh, yeah. Well, I like this. And he smokes. Haram, haram. You know. Dare you, dare you return your wife back. Let me then. He's telling his son like that. So after, you know, I thought he's convinced. I thought he's convinced now. If you bring your wife to this house, you're out. Subhanallah. Until your sister comes back to her husband, then you return back your wife. Allah must have. Because his daughter, you see, she's been kicked out by that person. So he wants his son now to kick out that wife of his, which is the daughter of the other person. Are you following me, brother? It's called Nikah Shira. And that is a mid halal. It's not halal haram. Another one. Another one, which is the, we call it Nikah al Tahleel. Person divorcing his wife, first time, then after that, the second time, after that, he got back to her, third time. After the third time, she's not allowed to go back to her husband until she married somebody else, a full marriage without any agreement. And that person, either he divorces her or he dies. And then she goes back to the first husband with three fresh divorces. But this person, now he wants his wife. He divorced her the third time. And she wants to go back to him. 
So they make a deal with another third, third person. You marry my wife for a couple of hours, a couple of days, three days, there you more than that. Then after that, you give also for me, and then you give it back to me, and then alas, she'll be now, I could marry her. And the, usually they would say, dare you touch her, you just marry her, that's in the contract. And the Prophet said, said, no way, until she licks his honey and he licks her honey. That means intercourse takes place. You have to be mad. Okay, intercourse, but quickly. Uh -huh. And then you give it back immediately. Even this is haram. This is called a taste al musta. Taste. In Arabic, if you do the taste, you know, if you women call taste, somebody will kill you. Call him, call him taste. It's like you call him donkey. Taste means a person who is thick, thick minded. That's a word for it. thick. You are taste, you are thick. You don't understand. The taste here, it means the billy goat. You know the billy goat? The male goat. One of the ones go like a beard. Billy goat. Billy goat at the time of the prophet, and the time of the farmers, whenever somebody who's got female goats, he wants to borrow this male to mate. He borrow him for a day, two days, three days, to mate with a female goat so he could produce you know, small goats. So he borrowed him for a time. So Prophet said he had called this person who is making that you, who's calling that woman and making that wife to be halal, is to be what? The borrowed billy goat. So you're borrowing that billy goat to mate with that ex-wife of yours to make it halal for you. Do you understand me? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْمُحَلِّلْ وَالْمُحَلَّلْ أَلَا أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِالْتَيْسِ الْمُسْتَعَارِ Shall I inform you who is the billy goat, borrowed billy goat, the one you borrow? May Allah curse the one who makes it halal, the person who had made this agreement to go and mate with this ex-wife. He's cursed. And the ex-husband, who is the one who wants wife back, even he is as well more thick than the one who is thick. Huh? He is as well cursed as well because of that. And the people make it halal. Another one as well. In our countries, they change the names in order to change halal, haram, haram, halal. You don't have the word riba. When you go and open a bank account in any bank there, they will give you the word bag, which is the translation of interest. They will not say to you, uh, okay, if you give us 500, you leave it for one year, we'll give you riba about, they will never say that word. They will never, because that word, it makes you riba haram, okay. Okay, no, no, no problem. We'll make it faida. Nice word. Interest. Your interest to have interest, isn't it? You are interested to have an interest. Uh, nice word, but riba, take interest on it. Now, people, they know what is the interest. In Egypt, they change it into ha'ida. <laughs> I like the terms. Because the people, they know what is the interest now, what is fa'ida. So, this is changing the name to make haram halal. Lots of things. We have in some of the countries, Muslim, unfortunately, they sell alcohol. And in there, you'll find huna tuba' al mashrubat al ruh. Here you could find the drinks which are called spirits. Take it from the word spirits. Meaning like what? To lift up your spirit. It's actually makes it down. <laughs> you drink it, you become an animal. So spirits. They change the name. Maybe they put khamra. Nobody will come. Khamra. Spirits. Not khamra. It's exactly the same thing like riba. And other words, and other words. Allah uh, Musta. Okay. Right, we'll finish here, inshallah. Have any questions before we start our mother prayer? For five, five minutes, good five minutes, inshallah, for questions. Father. So the um, the council of Jews, the Exactly, that's what he said. So this is, uh, you could say, something that, as an example, to set to you, why is it haram? Because of the manipulation. There's manipulation, the rules of Allah, by deception. Something you know is haram, but you're going the other way to make it happen. 
the consequences will be the same. Pain is the same as as changing the names. Now, these days, for example, in the Muslim country, we call it uh, dancing the women with the men. Folklore. You know the word in English, you know, like to show the tradition of this country. Uh, mixing, and they dance with each other. They call it healthy mixing as well in the university, some of the Muslim countries. SubhanAllah. Allah understand, they're changing the, the words. Oh, I can't speak a lot because, you know, you have, every time you speak something, you need to be careful as well. You need to make sure that nah, you're not crossing the lines. Oh, so, uh, um, in the parts about making uh, uh, installments, and so that some of the scholars, they mentioned that it was okay to, about the transaction with installments, increasing the price, i.e. someone buys something of someone and because they buy an installments, wh where have they got this? Okay, so you can question some of the scholars, which is correct. They make the installments with an extra price is to be had. Where do they get this? First of all, the Prophet he said, Man fi falahu aw kasuhuma aw Hadith Simak ibn Harb. Prophet he said that if you have sold something into two transactions, then the one which is halal is the one with the lower price. And the one which is the other one, which is higher price, is the riba. So if you sold an item, 50 pounds cash, or 70 pounds in installments, then either you take the 50 pounds halal, or you take the 70 pounds, which is haram. But you're still asking me, why the scholars have said it's halal, it's halal. You see, some of the scholars of the fiqh, they focus upon that if you have made two transactions at the same time, then the transaction is void. But if you went to one of them without the other, then it's halal. What I mean here, when you are a person, you sell the mobile, the 1,000, you only sell it with 1,100. Whether you pay it now, or you pay it in one year. You understand me? Whereas next door, you sell the 1,000 cash. You understand me? But you don't have 1,000 cash, 1,100. You have 1,000 what? 100. You pay it now or you pay it in one year. And everybody comes, you're going to pay what? Later. Later. I remember one person who died. He said, can you just tell me how much is this with taqsid al-mukhzi? Oh, Allah, he made me laugh and laugh and laugh. He wants something with taqsid al-mukhzi. He wanted to buy something from the bookshop and he wants to pay it in installment. But he said, Installment mukhsi, that means the lowest of money I could pay, please. Mukhsi, that means disgraceful. Disgraceful payment, please. How much? Let's say it costs 1,000. Can I pay 50 pence every month, for example? Taqsid al-mukhsi. Allah al-mustah. So I would say, uh, that's why the scholar said, Sheikh al said, if you have one transaction, yeah, but not two, you have to choose one of them. Okay? Um, but where is Yaqwani, the brotherhood? Where is the one that's going to facilitate? If you are a person to sell that mobile for 1,000, and according to the ability of mine, lots of people are going to come to you. Mm. And he said, brother, yes, you are in need of this mobile. Okay, 1,000, 1,000, sell 1,000. Whether it's one year, and you are allowed to take from me all types of guarantees. Let's say, for example, I've got a car. I register my car to you. Or you, I own my car with you. Do you understand that word? Or, for example, I take another guarantor to pay on my behalf, if in case. You take whatever you like to make sure that I'm going to pay the 1,000 pounds. But believe me, I have lots of people coming to you to buy because you are a flexible person. You're selling the item with the same price, even though you could make it what? Installment. I don't think people who are, can pay one goal, very few, uh, they will make pay installment because the person wants to get rid of it, isn't it? As long as you take guarantee, no problem, sure. And in our country, they call kibbialat, checks which are, yeah, so I'll, I'll pay you, for example, 10 kibbialat, 10 papers. Each paper represents a month or 12 papers. And how much is going to be paid? Do you understand me? If I, you know, fall short or not fulfilling, you could take it to the bank and stamp it, and then you could put me in prison straight away. In our country, they're not like here, it takes a long time. No, 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 here they're in prison straight away. 
If you don't pay that check, I will end up in prison. Following day. And that's why the people, they put their signature there. He had surrendered his name. Okay. So there is a system of where they could, you could make a guarantee for yourself. But if I'm from prison, don't care. Okay, throw me in the prison, okay? If, oh, you know, you know, 10 months, one year, you don't care. Uh, with this transaction, Chef, so like generally speaking, like most retailers or people that are selling items, they'll give you a cash option and a installment option. Does that you have to go for the cash unless the installment is the same as the cash. And there is no incurring of penalties if you are late. So let's say it is called uh, zero interest free huh, credit. If you are signing on zero credit uh, payment of this zero percent interest free but if you sign it to say that if you are deferring the payment if you are a little bit late you have to pay 2.8 APR whatever that's haram I can't sign that so you can't sign that and there is no such thing they have to have penalty penalize you now if in case you are in need you can't pay in, in, uh, you need something you can't pay it in one go like the current insurance there is, if you pay it one year, it's much cheaper if you pay it what? In installments monthly. But this person, either he is not capable and he needs a car, then he pays it monthly. He's not capable to pay the whole one go 3,000, maybe three, as a young child, young person. You know, they pay really water, eye watering sort of money, a lot of money. The, the 3,000, 4,000, what for? And he doesn't make an accident, I mean, the 4,000, clear profit for this company. Oh, they're selling you what? Air. Selling you what? They're not selling you anything. Selling you air. How? Uh, how? Four thousand pounds. So I'm just saying that if you don't, uh, and also if you are having the car for one month, you're not going to have the car for one month. Then you could have that insurance for one month. So, follow the kitab. Again, you have to, if you can't get away with something like signing, you have to sign it. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the street. You know, many of the landlords, they say to you, you have to pay the rent. Otherwise, if you don't, but most of them, they don't really apply it, unless you are really late, late. You know, every month, you're daily at a month. I was late in my rent, a month, five days, six days, seven days, one week. But sometimes, they know me a long time. They let go of these things. They don't really implement it unless you are a person who is a troublemaker. True or not, I mean, yes. I don't understand the dividend is received from the stock. I'm not really sure about that. I haven't got stock, so I don't know. Nam, the finger halfway up. <laughs> Sleeping finger. Huh? If you speak to yourself or something else, I mean, his pen dropping down is louder than your voice. Where is the what? Where's the riba? Where's the riba involved in Ina? Yeah, this is riba is not just what you think is like. Give me five pounds and give it to you seven pounds. That's a clear cut riba. There's lots of riba which you don't understand. There's a riba which is hidden. And that's another thing as well. The hidden riba is more worse than the clear riba. Because the clear, clear riba, I don't know it's haram, but I'm doing this one and I don't know riba. And I'm thinking it's halal. So he's asking, what is the, where is the riba in the ina? The riba in the ina that I have come to him to ask him for 1,000 pounds. He didn't give me 1,000 pounds for returning 1,000. He said 1,100 after one year. No, oh, this is riba. Okay, how we make it halal? Make it halal by this mobile. We put it in the middle. But it's not actually the mobile. We want the money, isn't it? So that's why the riba is. It's worse than even taking it from the beginning as riba. So the riba is actually, I intend to take the money regardless of the increase. And that's obviously everybody. That's the riba. But I want the money. I'm taking 800, remember the example, 800 per pound from him, and you're going to return it to him, what? 1,100. It would be easier, better the case, the first one. 1,000, 1,000. Now I'm taking only 800 pounds. 
I'm losing more money. And that's why they said, some people say, Wallahi, I go to the non-Islamic bank, it's better, more merciful than the Islamic bank. So they say in our country, Wallah. That one is clear riba, and then less, much less than these people are taking riba in different ways. The cement, you remember the cement thing? <laughs> the loss of riba that you, 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 you don't understand, like riba al fadl two types of riba. Riba nasi are clear. Give me 100, I give it 150 pounds, and clear riba. There's another riba, the riba al fadl which is hidden. Gold with gold. Do you understand that? No, you don't understand that. Gold with gold. How? It's a riba. If I've got one gram of 24 carats of gold, and you have five grams of 18 carats of gold, let me understand, make you understand what is 24 and 18. Gold is graded according to the purity of the gold. The best is the 24, the most very expensive. So that's clear gold. 24, they call 24 carats. And the one which is goes less in number 23, 21, 19, even to go nine carats. These are gold which are not clean. Even nine carats is like gold plated, not even gold. Nine carats. In the market, my one gram of 24 carats, 60 pounds, and your five grams of 18 carats is worth 60 pounds in the market. So each gram of yours is worth 12 pounds. You understand me? It's an example. If I now want to exchange with you my one gram of 24 carats of gold with your five grams of 18 carats of gold, which is in terms of money wise, is the same. Yours is 60 pounds and mine 60 pounds. You understand that? If I did like this, this is haram. It's called riba. To make it halal, only two ways. Either I give you one gram of 24, you give me what? One gram of eighty. One for one. Or one gram, but I'm not, nobody's gonna do it because my one gram is worth a lot. I'll sell my one gram of twenty-four carats of money, take the money, and I'll purchase from you the eighteen carats, five grams of gold. You understand that now? So I've exchanged like this one gram for five grams, that's the riba. Has to be one gram for one gram, two grams for two grams. Same number for the same number. And that goes for the silver, goes for the dates, goes for the raisins, goes for the barley. Okay? So class A of dates, class B of dates. Let's say class A of dates, I'm buying the one which is called Majwul, Majwul, you know, Majwul, Majwul. Okay? One kilo of that, that's about, let's say, 50 pounds. One kilo, that's it. 50 pounds. That's what class A. And yours, the class B, different, is one kilo of that is 25. So I know that if I give you one kilo of that date, you should give me what? Two kilos of your date, which is class B. Yours is each kilo is 25. You understand? Are you following me? If I did this one to two kilos, that's riba. To make a halal, you are irritating me. <laughs> you make it halal one kilo for one kilo. Or I'll sell my one kilo of the dates in money. And then I'll bring the money and I take from you the two kilos. You understand that now? I sell it for, for 50 pounds to him. I give with the 50 pounds and buy you two kilos. Okay? Come on. Yeah. You see, when you stop me in these things that I told you, that's does not clarify the example of his. Whatever question you have in your mind, don't wait until I, he understands me. So that's the example. So what is your... So I'm giving him now my one kilo. I don't want him to as well to be confused. So I'm giving him the one kilo of the date. What is it what say? So he gives me one kilo plus 25, riba. Do you understand me? It has to be. I either I sell it and then I get the money. I can't get it. It has to be one kilo for one kilo. No extra money from him. That's called riba al-fadl. Does that run into the rest of the food? 
difference among the scholars. Different among the scholars. Tikhil Bani says no. Tikhil Bani says yes. Different among the scholars. As a run for the milk, salt with salt, salt A, salt B, Himalayan salt, the Himalayan salt, costs much more than the normal salt. You know, I heard about the Himalayan salt. It costs much more. Red salt. But, alhamdulillah, that's just the prayer. Inshallah, subhanakallah, alhamdulillah. I shouldn't have suffered. I'm sorry about